Displaying errors is a natural part of development. If something goes wrong when you're working on a project, you really want to know what the error is. You don't just want to see a blank screen. So typically when you're developing, you'll have display errors in your PHP configuration file turned on. Now that's absolutely fine because locally developing, you need to see these errors so you can debug. Without them, it's pretty much useless. You'll just, like I said, see a blank screen. Now the problem arises is when you have this enabled in production. By production I mean when your project is live and real people are using it. And you might not think uh, an error being displayed is much of a problem but now we're going to see why it is. So I have open in my text editor my php.ini file, so my php configuration file. And if you go ahead and open yours and display for uh, or search for display errors, you can see here that we have display errors on. So the PHP configuration file actually gives you advice on this. So for production websites, you're strongly encouraged to turn this feature off and use error logging instead. So if you did need to uh, detect whether there are any errors, you can actually log errors to your server where obviously no one can access them. And then you can go through and look, look at them if you need to. So we're going to look now at the dangers of keeping display errors on. Now at the moment I'm locally developing, but really in production this should never be the case. If you're installing PHP yourself or if you have a host that's kind of sloppy and they do have this on by default, then you are in real trouble. So over to this file here then, which I happen to have open in my browser, we have a connection to MySQL, we're just using PDO, and we're connecting to 127.0.0.1, which is just my local uh, IP. I'm entering my username here, my password, which at the moment are just root and root. So obviously at the moment, this is all working. We can refresh the page, everything's going right. But if for some reason we had a, date, uh, a host that didn't exist, so cats, for example, that's not a valid host name or IP, then we see the following error. But let's just change this to something that will load a bit quicker. Okay, so we can see here we get a warning. PDO is basically uh, throwing an exception, but we have an uncaught exception. We're not catching this PDO exception. And here we get some information. And there are two things here that are kind of uh, key to attackers to use against you. The first one is the file path. At the moment, I'm just serving these files from, um, I'm just using MAMP locally to do this. Um, but we can see the full file path here, including the file name, which isn't as bad, but we have the back path all the way to the root. And that's really dangerous because this will allow your attackers to try and uh, force an error and then kind of work out the directory structure of your project, which isn't good. The second one, and probably the most vital, is the fact that here we're actually displaying our username and our password. So now anyone that knows your host name. So if you have MySQL installed on the same server, which is likely, they can then just log directly into your database. So this is really important. Now, obviously this is just one example out of hundreds. Uh, you wouldn't normally mistype your host, but it is certainly possible. However, with any error reporting, regardless of its, if it's kind of, or if you think it's use, useless to an attacker, it probably isn't. So how do we actually overcome this? Um, well, let me just leave this to A actually. The first one is to, just to make sure display errors is off. Um, if you do make a change to your PHP configuration file, you'll need to restart uh, your web server, whether that's Apache or Nginx. So you make sure you actually restart. These settings will then be taken into effect. Uh, you can keep log errors on. That's probably useful if you are wanting to just go in and see if there have been any errors. But once you've turn display errors off, you won't see any of these errors. Now, if for some reason display errors is on and you can't turn it off, there's another solution. So let's just open up our browser and make sure we're still getting this error. Now you can use the INI set function and you can actually set one of these options. So let's head over to here. So we're going to turn display errors off. Now that's going to change your runtime configuration so you won't see that same error. 
there we go, we've got rid of it. So that's a very simple way of doing things. You could also use error reporting zero. That's gonna go ahead and turn error reporting off. So if we just uncomment I and I set, we see here that we get no errors as well. So either way, if for some odd reason you can't change your PHP configuration and display errors is on by default, then you can use either of these or both in conjunction when you're on a production environment. So you could just have these somewhere in your project. If it's a very basic project, you're not using a framework and you could comment these out during local development. So you do see errors and you can go ahead and apply them when you're pushing your project to production. So that's an overview on error reporting and how important it is that it's always turned off when anyone but yourself is accessing your project.